purple. Very subtle. Well, technically it's plum. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Colton Ogburn, and these are all the Easter eggs, references, and little things you might have missed in The Penguin, Episode 1. HBO's The Penguin is a spin-off series of the 2022 film The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson as the Cape Crusader and an almost unrecognizable Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Oh! The Penguin, or Oswald Cobblepot, is one of Batman's most iconic villains. He was created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger and first appeared in Detective Comics number 58 back in 1941. The Penguin is typically depicted with a short and stout stature, a pointy beak-like nose, and in some iterations, webbed fingers. And of course, we can't forget his signature umbrella equipped with various gadgets and weaponry. Now, perhaps the most iconic portrayal of the Penguin can be found in Batman Returns, where the classic Batman and foe is brought to life by none other than Danny DeVito. A penguin is a bird that cannot fly. I am a man. Now, Colin Farrell's shocking transformation into the Penguin certainly doesn't disappoint. Despite this version of the villain being a more grounded version, there were still, of course, a great deal of practical effects that went into transforming Colin Farrell into the Penguin for the Batman. In this redefining of the Batman story, the Penguin serves as a lieutenant for the mob boss and Batman villain, Carmine Falcone. The Riddler has blown up the Gotham City seawalls, resulting in a massive flood. There's actually a great video special look type trailer for this series up on YouTube that showcases Matt Reeves discussing how this series was meant to depict the class warfare happening in Gotham City. We're in the aftermath of all of that flooding and, you know, that is the void that Oz steps into, you know, uh, when he decides to make his moves. The opening newscast in this episode discusses how the more affluent communities and their homes were left unaffected by the flood, while the working class of Gotham has been greatly impacted. And this is really well depicted with the city skyline of Gotham. The rich and powerful elites who operate in the city are literally safe from the flood up in their ivory towers, while those like the Penguin who operate in the belly of the beast have been greatly affected by this flood. In the opening seconds of this episode, we hear this snippet about Don Mitchell Jr. This being the Riddler's first kill and the murder that is being investigated at the beginning of the 2022 Batman film. We also hear mentions of Carmine Falcone's arrest and his murder. In this opening sequence, we can see shots from the Batman, such as this shot of the Penguin looking out the window following the flood, a shot that in the Batman movie is narrated by Batman saying, And some will seize the chance to grab everything they can which is exactly what Penguin is doing in this series. We also have this shot of Mayor Elect Real that was also shown in The Batman. We will rebuild. Together, we will learn to believe in Gotham again. The music playing is from The Batman's phenomenal score by Michael Giacchino. Together, we will learn to believe in Gotham again. We should also mention that Michael's son, Mick, is scoring the Penguin series. So we hear the newscasters say, Watching the Batman vigilante atop Gotham Square Garden, helping to save the lives of hundreds of injured victims. Which is of course in reference to this scene in the final moments of the Batman. People need hope to know someone's out there for them. And I loved this shot that once again echoed Matt Reeves' theme of class warfare showing the Gotham City skyline and then panning down into the depths of Gotham where we find the Penguin who, I might add, is sporting his classic umbrella. So Penguin arrives at the Iceberg Lounge, the club that he ran in The Batman. He breaks into Carmine's safe where he finds dirt on various people, including Johnny Vitti, Carmine's nephew and enforcer from the comics. Vitti first appeared in Batman 407, which was part of the Batman Year One arc. And in The Long Halloween, a comic we'll talk about here shortly, Vitti is the first victim of the Holiday Killer, who is actually in this show, but more on that in a bit. So in this file, we get a fun nod to Austin Wittick, the costume designer on this series. We can also see this photo of Councilman Haiti that Penguin will later use as blackmail. Haiti, of course, first appeared in the Batman comics back in 2012. We then meet Alberto Falcone, Carmine Falcone's drug addict's son. Al's an addict, sweetheart. He's got a penchant for drops. Alberto Falcone's most prominent comic book appearance was his role in the classic Batman story, the aforementioned The Long Halloween, where he takes on the moniker of the Holiday Killer, a villain who is also featured in the comic Batman Dark Victory. In the comics, the Holiday Killer murdered members of the competing crime family run by Salvador Moroni, which we will be talking about more here in just a bit. Hey person, do you know a 10 letter word for the long side of a triangle? Hypotenuse. 
How did you know that? Are you some kind of math and science wizard? No, not really, but I did start taking short, fun math and science lessons with Brilliant. They're the sponsor of this video. With Brilliant, I spend about 15 minutes a day doing math and science lessons to sharpen my brain. Oh, but I flunked out of math and science in school because I'm a stupid idiot. No, you're not. I was also a terrible math and science student in school, but I've grown up and I feel like I've missed out by not paying more attention. Math and science are hard, but if you can learn those, then you can learn anything. And learning is, of course, a lifelong skill. Brilliant helps you learn something new every day, like science, computer science, or math. You'll learn to understand big things like terraforming Mars or regular household items like how plumbing works. Heck, this lesson even made me a better pool player. I wish I had had these lessons when I was in school because instead of a teacher droning on, Brilliant builds your understanding with hands-on problem solving. And this is proven to work six times better than just watching lecture videos. These lessons let you play with concepts from the ground up. Brilliant doesn't focus on memorization. It teaches you these concepts through problem solving. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Plus, these lessons were created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Plus, Brilliant has just launched new featured content that has helped me a lot in my job. They have lessons in how to examine data and modeling with multiple variables. And I'm telling you, when you run a YouTube channel, you have a lot of data to sort through. Brilliant has made me better at my job with short, fun lessons. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash screen crush or click on the link in the description. And you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, back to the penguin. Penguin says, Stand off the drops. A reference to what the drugs are called in the Batman. But drops and other drugs are still rampant. I'm not it's saying, gotten worse. I'm not saying. I should also point out that he is being played by the same guy who played Randall in season two of The Walking Dead. Here we can see Alberto's hand shaking, echoing the same fear and cowardice we saw in him in Long Halloween. He always wanted to be the top guy, but he never had the guts to make it happen. We then get our second mention of Salvador Moroni. Wasn't always his. Used to be Salvatore's. Now, we have seen Moroni before on the big screen in The Dark Knight. The rivalry between Falcone and Moroni is a classic one in the comics, and Moroni in the comics is the guy who throws acid on Harvey Dent, turning him into the notorious Two-Face. So Penguin mentions Rex Calabrese. When I was a kid, I was a gangster, real old school type, Rex Calabrese. Rex was first introduced in Batman Eternal number 14, and he was later retconned into being the biological father of Catwoman, who typically is Carmine Falcone, like in the Batman movie. So after killing Alberto, we see Penguin return to his car, where we see these kids messing with it and attempting to steal his wheels, reminiscent of the opening scene from Logan. Our very own Lee Mazio also pointed out that this is exactly how Batman found his second Robin, Jason Todd, in Batman number 408. So perhaps this is a tease that Victor is going to be Penguin's metaphorical Robin. Yeah, he's gonna take him under his wing, his penguin wing. <laughs> penguin catches a young man named Victor who begs for his life and is revealed to have a stutter. <gasps> please, please, please. Victor's disability brings out the penguin's sympathy. Please, please, Jesus, don't take a breath. Penguin himself has been mocked for his facial deformities and his limp, so it makes sense that he would have a softer side for someone who also suffers from a disability. And this scene happening right after Penguin killed Alberto for laughing at him was just perfect. Not only did we see Penguin's disdain for being looked at like a freak, but we also saw his two sides. He's a villain, no doubt, he's a criminal, but he's not evil. There are parts of him that are a good guy, sort of like Tony Soprano. I don't get Give a f All right, don't give a f so on Alberto's phone calendar, we can see November 23rd with Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights is a moniker that was given to the Bat family in the comics and was also the title of a video game and a CW show. And guys, this show, like the Batman, is super adult, but the Penguin series has taken it a step further with f bombs. <laughs> and nudity. So next we meet Eve Carlo. She's not in the comics, but perhaps she's a gender bin or related to the character of Basil Carlo, AKA Clayface. Here we can see the Burgess Jewelry Store, a reference to Burgess Meredith, who played the Penguin in the 1960 Batman TV show. Yes, I'm afraid you'll have to unravel the rest of my plot by yourself. Here we see Penguin now donning a purple suit, just like his extravagant and colorful suits we've seen in the comics and in the cartoons. Here we can see banners that read, help us, don't forget, 
metas, stop drops, and real change. All showing the distress of Gotham's residents affected by the flood as well as the rampant crime. The same rampant crime that inspired Bruce Wayne to become the Batman just a little over a year prior. Next, we hear mention of the Odessa mob, a brutal Russian mob family from the Batman comics who only cared about selling drugs and laundering money. I got jumped by the Odessa mob, maybe a Burnley town. I don't know how it happened fast. But... Bristol Township is a small town in Gotham that houses the first families of Gotham. It's also where Wayne Manor resides. Burnside is an area of Gotham, an area we actually saw Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, actually move to in the 2011 Batgirl comic. And Robbinsville, which is mentioned a little later, is another neighborhood in Gotham named after comic artist Frank Robbins. Next, we meet Milo Grappa. He, like many characters in the series, was first introduced in The Long Halloween as Carmine Falcone's bodyguard. And next, we meet Carmine's daughter, Sophia Falcone. And man, is she eerily terrifying in the best way possible. She first appeared, like seemingly every Everyone else in this series in The Long Halloween, issue number six to be specific, and we learn that she has spent time in Arkham Asylum, the place where most of Batman's baddies are sent. I thought you were still at a... Arkham? No. I've been rehabilitated. And I really love this lunch scene between Penguin and Sophia. We hear her talk about how Carmine, her father, would not let her put her elbows on the table, but Penguin, on the other hand, encourages her. Well, who's stopping you now, huh? This, once again, is showing us the dichotomy between elite criminals in their ivory towers like Carmine Falcone and criminals down in the slums like Penguin who are fighting daily for their piece of the pie. We also hear the mention of her comic book alias, The Hangman. What the Gazette call me? The Hangman? This was Sophia's moniker in the comics when she went on a bit of a killing spree. Next, we see Penguin and Victor getting on the train, and this was probably my favorite scene in the episode. We see these two open handicap seats, but Oz, despite his limp and constant pain from the arthritis in his foot, he refuses to take a seat. He refuses to accept what he views as a crutch. This is once again driving home the fact that Penguin and Victor are both burdened by a disability, but their refusal to sit in the handicap seats amplifies their refusal to allow their disability to define them. They are too proud to accept any form of help. It's also on the train that we see someone wearing a Riddler mask like in the Batman. This is of course a Riddler sympathizer like the ones we saw in the Batman and this also echoes the Joker sympathizers and mask wearers that we saw in the Joker film. And if you scan this QR code it will take you to the Rata Alada, the same website from the Batman. There you can find a missing newspaper page about Alberto Falcone. In Penguin's car we get arguably the funniest scene in the episode and one of the biggest reveals really penguin is a dolly parton fan and hey, goofs aside, this song actually does relate to Penguin. I mean, look at the lyrics. Wanna move ahead, but the boss won't seem to let me. I swear, sometimes the man is out to get me. And it's a rich man's game, no matter what they call it, and you spend your life putting money in his wallet. This is literally the situation that Penguin has found himself in and has been in for the bulk of his life. So next we meet Penguin's mom. This city is meant to be yours, sweetheart. What are you gonna do to get it? And I loved how this showed us that Penguin trusts his new friend Victor with knowing the location of his mother. He's very protective of his mother, and it says a lot that Penguin was comfortable bringing Victor there. Penguin's mother says, You know I hate flying. Which is hilarious because penguins, of course, are flightless birds. Then Penguin goes to Blackgate Penitentiary, the jailhouse in Gotham for the non-insane criminals, unlike those in Arkham Asylum. Blackgate Penitentiary first appeared in Detective Comics 629. We then meet Sal Maroney in the flesh, being played by the iconic Clancy Brown of Spongebob fame, of course. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Penguin gets in yet another car chase, echoing back to his chase with Batman. I got you! And I loved how this episode began with Penguin putting a Falcone in the trunk of his car and then it ended with him putting himself in the trunk of his car to avoid being captured by a Falcone. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. And hey guys, while I have you, I just wanted to really quickly shout out our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com. We've got lots of fun geekdom inspired merch up on our store right now. Go get yourself something nice. Helps the channel out a lot. Thanks so much for your support. Now in the car, we see Penguin bash this guy into his radio, making another song come on similar to the greatest showman scene in Deadpool 3 when Wolverine is bashing Deadpool's head into the radio. The song, however, that comes on Penguin's radio is The Promise by Win in Rome. The lyrics are, I'm sorry, but I'm just thinking of the right words to say. I know they don't sound the way I planned them to be, but 
If you wait around a while, I'll make you fall for me. This song encapsulates what we're supposed to feel for Penguin. He's not the hero that we need, but if we stick through, if we stick with him long enough, perhaps we will come to like him. So the episode ends with Penguin being cleared for the murder of Alberto when Victor sends a car crashing in that of course has Alberto's body in the trunk. However, his body is missing his pinky finger and his father's ring, which of course originally belonged to Moroni. Perfectly parallels how in the comics, Sophia didn't receive her father father's dead body, but she did receive his finger and ring. So guys, that was our breakdown of the Penguin episode one. I want to give a huge shout out to Lee Mazio for all of his help in writing this breakdown. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Colton Ogburn.